We have a back and biceps workout for you today. We're starting off with some activations as we usually do, just trying to get some really good awareness for how those muscles contract. Uh, no point putting weight in your hands until you know what that feels like and really get strong there. So all we're starting off with, uh, with some internal or external rotation of the shoulder blade, um, the full scapular motion, just trying to get really comfortable and aware of where that is, making sure it feels balanced, whatever else. Uh, this one's a really nice one just to isolate those movements and really lock it in there. You can see I'm pulling everything down hard towards my hips as well, which is obviously going to engage that lat a bit more too. Um, I chuck a second angle in here too, just to make sure my upper back, my lower traps and stuff are, are getting a bit more work. Um, if you have trouble with retraction at, or at least the scapula starting the movement when you're doing rows, this can be a really cool one to add in just to make sure it's all working. And the third one that I'm about to start is going through um, a lat activation that I really like just because you're able to isolate that function uh, because the lat inserts your upper arm and then fans out across your back towards your spine or your lower spine. Uh, we want to just think about pulling those two points together. So all I'm doing there is driving my shoulder towards my mid lower back. And then again on the other side, just trying to make sure I feel both sides. Obviously, the, the lower I can feel that lat, the better because I want to make sure I can really get that, that contraction before we go to the rows. And then once that's all feeling good, we're going to go straight into a cable row. Uh, if you don't have a dual handle, that's okay, but just try to stick to a wider handle so we can really get used to this movement, which is wrapping around the body. Um, last thing you want to do for an activation is use a silly little small handle where you get stuck with your body in the way. Now, there is obviously a purpose for that, but this isn't here. So you can see the first thing I'm doing is engaging the lat here. I'm not allowing the elbows to take over, and that's your big takeaway from this one. Just making sure that your biceps aren't starting, starting the movement, and we're thinking about wrapping those elbows around the body, really pulling those shoulders in. Hold these as long as you need, guys. If you can't feel that lat, there's no hope you're feeling in a barbell row later on, so make sure that you're getting that hit now and pulling those lats down. And this second one, again, all I'm doing is trying to make sure my upper back's activated, just make sure I can feel all those muscles there. So once I've got those lats uh, all fired up, obviously we can start bringing that weight up. But really take your time with these. Make sure the weight's nice and light so you can actually hold those contractions in the back without being particularly fatigued. All right, so now we're all warmed up. We're going to be going straight into a little bit heavier with the rows. Uh, I've got a fixed handle here just to make sure that we're a bit more stable. Uh, if, you want, if, if it still feels great with the dual cable, then have at it. Uh, this one I just was able to load up a little bit more and obviously now that we've activated that fully shortened range we're going to spend a bit more time um, with a bit more weight where it's appropriate which is obviously a bit more with the mid and length and range of that muscle um, so this this just did the job pretty well so again we're still making sure that lat engages first we're trying to think about pulling that shoulder and elbow around the body really lock everything down hard but as long as you're getting that first engagement of the lat you're really pulling that down um, the arms are pretty much out of it a lot more you're just not Get, get rid of thinking about your hands. That's the best thing you can do on these. Um, they're just hooks, and I'm just wrapping those elbows around the body. As long as you nail that, these rows row should feel pretty awesome. Uh, I'm not thinking about just trying to pull right back, as in pull the hands towards my tummy. I'm just thinking about trying to wrap those elbows around. So you see, it doesn't actually look like I'm getting a huge amount of range, but from a lat control, it's as much as I need, or it's as much as I can get. Anything further than that, you're going to find it's actually a, a rotation or something from my shoulder blade. Um, and then here I'm just adding a little bit. This is quite a cool little technique to use, a little bit more advanced, but if you want to go, if you want to try it out, go for it. Uh, what we're doing here is loading the weight with an extra 30, 40%, and then we're spending more time in the length and range where we know we're stronger. So I'm going with a smaller handle um, where it's a bit more appropriate because obviously I can get a little bit more length of the lat. And as long as I'm still engaging that muscle first and I'm pulling through, I'm just sticking to where I'm strong. So there's a bit more weight on the, on the bar. There's a bit more... Um, there's a lot less movement, but I'm just making sure that that's all on the right muscle. Alright, now that we're done there, lats are pretty pumped up, everything's feeling pretty good. We're going to go straight into some activations for our lower back. Uh, we've got some pretty heavy deadlifts we want to chuck in today. So this is a really great one just to make sure you can feel the lumbar or the lower back, just to make sure both erectors are working. Um, pretty common for one of these to be sort of misbehaving. So there's three movements I'm doing here. I'm thinking about putting both my feet towards the left and really just trying to shove out to make sure I can feel that lower back contract. Uh, sounds funny, but obviously if you can get those across and really shove um, across with both feet, you'll find you can feel that lower back. If you just shove with your left foot, you'll find it's more your hip flexor, or at least your hip. 
And the second one here, we're just trying to activate through the obliques. Um, I don't do any oblique work because I'm not trying to make my waist wider, but I do want to make sure my obliques work. So this is a nice one just to add in, just to at least make sure that I, there's awareness there and I can feel them. And then third one, this is for the rec fem, uh, your hip flexors, just to make sure we can stabilize that hip joint again. Uh, this one's a nice one that you can see I'm shortening it from the hip first and then extending the knee to fully shorten that rec fem. Obviously not by straining the leg fully because we're not thinking about uh, vastus medialis or anything else that shortens over the knee. So we're shoving up high enough with the knee that we can't actually fully extend our knee. And both sides. So that's a nice little one to get those hip flexors working or at least make sure they're stable from there. And then once I'm done here, we're going to roll over onto my tummy. Um, really, the one if you're doing deadlifts, you really want to make sure both your glutes and hamstrings are working, um, rather than just loading all that weight in your back. So these two are really good. All I want to do is make sure that I'm driving both my hips down with the pad, lifting my knee, and just focusing on squeezing that glute at the top. So I'm just holding that, making sure I can feel that full glute without the lower back coming over. That's a big part of it, um, to make sure I've got full control of both glutes. So just making sure it's all locked in, driving that up and holding that position at the top. And then small difference we have with the hamstring variation is before we lift that knee, we're going to think about driving the heel right up to our bum. So you can see I'm trying to shorten that from the knee first. And then as I lift, I'm trying to make sure that that contraction stays purely on the hamstring. I'm not letting that glute take over. So I'm shortening, feeling the hamstring, and then lifting through to make sure I'm fully shortening the hamstring from both the knee and the hip. Quite a good one there. All right, so once we're done with these, these glutes and hammies, we want to go straight to our deadlifts. Uh, obviously, I want you to warm up with a weight that's appropriate. Just make sure that hip extension's uh, feeling good. Uh, I think I chuck a video on here too, just to uh, add in a straight leg deadlift variation first before I do any deadlifts, just to make sure I can feel those hamstrings recruiting and my hips are feeling good. Um, so we're all setting up here. So without worrying about my knees coming through, all I'm thinking about doing is pushing those hips back, really making sure I can feel a nice stretch and everything's responding the way it should through the glutes and hammies. Cool, so once that's all feeling good, we're going to go straight into a full uh, uh, deadlift. So we'll check a little more weight on. Whatever is appropriate for you guys, just start, you know, my max up here, I think we're working up to sort of 200, so sort of 50% of that, and just making sure that uh, it's feeling good, we can work our way up. A uh, big pointer there is I actually took my shoes off, and um, obviously this depends on whether your gym will allow you, but all I want to do is make sure you're as stable as possible on the ground. So having some sort of big Nike with some big uh, foam lift is obviously not ideal. Trying to make sure we have a really good contact with the ground, we've got a good feeling of our heels and our toes, just to make sure there's good awareness of planting our feet. And then you can see through here, my back is, is absolutely stable. Lats are nice and locked from those rows we did earlier. We're making sure nothing else comes through. So I'm trying to make sure there's still some good speed involved. I'm just thinking, about, you know, if that back's locked, I should just have to think about driving my legs into the ground. Like I'm really pushing that away. The last thing you want to do is think about yanking that bar off the ground because it's not going anywhere. All right, so this is one of the top sets on here. Um, I chuck a belt on once I get over sort of 140. Uh, this is completely up to you. I just find I've got something to brace against. Um, it's definitely not a do or die. You don't need one. But I find if I'm going below six reps and I'm, I'm keeping things really, uh, I guess, a little more strained at this level, I want to make sure that everything is locked and nothing moves. So um, that helps me. But you should see nothing between, obviously, the 100 kilos we had on there and now 200. There's no change in how I'm moving. I'm just making sure that my lats are locked. I'm really driving my feet to the ground. And nothing else changes. Um, if your if your weight starts to dictate how you move, you've gone too heavy. Make sure there's control there, uh, and then you should be good to go. So the second one we're going to here is going to be a, a barbell row. So uh, this, I think this is the max I go up to. I don't put any more weight on here. I'm just trying to make sure it feels good. So you can see I'm still trying to make sure the lat is engaging first. I'm not letting my arms come over or, or move first. So initiate with that right muscle, we're really pulling those shoulders back and down hard. You can see I'm really wrapping my shoulders towards my hips. And my range is completely dictated by what I've got left in my lats. I'm not just thinking about pulling with my hands. I'm engaging that lat and really wrapping around as far as I've got. And then I'm supersetting this with a uh, pull-up. Just a nice vertical angle to keep that depression of the shoulder blade happening. Uh, and also a nice stretch of the lat at the top. So fully lengthening the scapula, letting that fully elevate. And then I'm engaging the lat down, really pulling that towards the hips. 
So a big one with your lats here is making sure that no matter how much weight you're putting on that bar, we're still thinking about what's initiating first, wrapping that muscle round towards where, where its origin is. We're not just thinking about wrap, like driving the elbows towards the ceiling. Uh, there's so many guys that are so built up through the mid uh, or their upper back and they can never have any ability to feel their lats. That's exactly why. It's just how you think about it. Obviously, back's being behind you. You're not able to really see how that's moving as much. Um, so the easiest part of that is just making sure you completely forget about what's in your hands. Start visualizing how that lat actually looks. Uh, if it helps, go find a picture of an anatomy chart and see where that actually wraps around. This will really help when you're visualizing uh, through this movement. So not a very long workout with, with back training today, but the big focus I want you to take out of this is that we're still accessing the full range of that muscle. So we started off with a cable row, obviously with a fully shortened range in, in mind, trying to really hold the positions, just to make sure we get really strong where you're weak, and this is where nobody spends any time with their back training. Uh, and then obviously more of the mid range, we started bringing your deadlifts and your barbell rows, just trying to get you know load the weight where we know is appropriate, we know it's heavier. Uh, and then the, obviously the pull-up is a bit more of a stretch. So we know that we're still accessing, accessing the short, lengthened, and mid-range of that muscle. So we know it's a pretty complete workout, even though you know it really didn't take more than half an hour, uh, really making sure those big muscles are doing the work. And it, it felt pretty good by the end. It had, it had a really good pump. So if that's the only real goal of that workout, make sure it's short and sweet. And as long as you hit that goal in 30 minutes, that's all you need. So now we're done with the back training. We're going to throw in a little bicep workout at the end of this. I really like this variation. The only goal of this is really making sure we're as stable as possible. You know, most generic bicep exercises are going to be very hard to align with your both arms if you're doing a two arm movement, especially if you start putting a bit more muscle on or even, you know, just train back, your lats going to be a bit more pumped up. Really hard to make sure that's pulling directly in line with your bicep and not beating up your elbows in the process. So obviously you can see here, I can directly line that up with my bicep as that dumbbell is only exerting force straight down. So I'm making sure that all that tension is on the bicep and I'm not worrying about any rotation from my shoulder. And obviously just to make sure even further, I'm actually focusing on locking that shoulder in place. So try this as your main focus on your next bicep workout, guys, because curling from the arm is not hard. It's making sure that you're really focusing on the shoulder, making sure that shit's not rolling. Uh, being able to stabilize that joint to make sure that you're not allowing your shoulder or your forearm or whatever else to come into that movement. And the bigger other part of that is making sure you're not rotating from your shoulder because you can really beat your shoulders up if you're trying to fit yourself in an exercise that really doesn't fit. So I'll walk you through this uh, exercise. There's three different variations of supination on this. All that's doing is making sure that we're using that bicep or, or bringing in supination at different parts of the range, where obviously the main function of the bicep by itself is actually more supination of the arm, not necessarily flexion of the elbow. Um, so this first one, we're just staying supinated the whole way through and making sure we're flexing from the elbow. Second one, we're going to hold in the fully short range of that muscle where you're weakest and just focus on the supination. This is quite difficult to do. If you're really able to feel that bicep and pull around and supinate with that muscle, you start to see what I mean. And then last one, last one we're going to start with a hammer grip and then supinate as we come up. So those three together I find really effective and you'll feel them really, really well as long, again, as that shoulder is stable. And it's just trying to make sure that we're obviously working that full bicep group of those three muscles and making sure they're all working together. As long as you keep that nice and stable, that should work really well. Okay, so I was happy I added this in. Uh, this is an activation for biceps I've really liked lately. Um, I don't know if you find it, but I definitely do. Halfway through a bicep workout, and I feel my um, arms are just so numb I can't really feel what's going on anymore. I add this in just to make sure I've got uh, a good control of that, that bicep. I really know you know, how it feels, and I can just get that contraction back to where it was in the start of the workout. So I'm fully supinating the arm. I'm putting pressure on the inside of my palm and just holding that position in a fully short range, and then I'm adding in some shoulder extension as well just to make sure that I'm fully shortening that muscle. Um, what that does is obviously just holding that muscle in the fully shortened range again, just making sure we get a really good contraction there, making sure that nothing else is, is moving. We're just holding an isometric, make sure we got a good connection with it. Um, it seems to work really, really well. Uh, just the same with any muscle. If it's a weakness for you and you find you start placing tension somewhere else, adding in something like that where you can just really lock it down, make sure that you can feel it really well. And it's quite a nice little reminder for your body just to make sure you can get back to the next set and it's all on that bicep. Um, so again, I'm just going one more set here, just making sure nothing else is taking over and I'm stabilizing as much from that joint. Um, to be honest, this stuff really hurt uh, and in a good way because I was just making sure it was all bicep and after a good pump in the, in the first couple of sets, I was just able to keep it all on the bicep, nothing else was coming, I couldn't swing, uh, you know, it was just whatever work I could get done for that bicep, which is exactly what it should be. 
So we're taking away any idea that you just need to put massive weight on everything you're training. I think it needs to be come back to using your brain and making sure you know uh, how you're training that muscle and what range or what goal you have for that exercise. Obviously with the deadlifts, we were just trying to you know really push some weight, make sure that things were strong. So obviously we put some weight on there. Whereas with the cable rows or in, with these dumbbells, you know, I'm only using eight kilos here, but it fucking hurt. Uh, I'm not trying to swing as much around as I can possibly lift. I'm making sure that the, the uh, goal of this exercise is to make sure I'm fully lengthening the muscle when I'm contracting before I move and nothing through the upper arm when my shoulder moves. So I'm not going to be able to use that much weight, especially at the end of the workout. So just leave your ego at the door. Make sure that you're controlling that weight as best you can. We're training muscles here. We're not training weight. We're not trying to push the weight from point A to point B. So just keep that as, as, at the front of your mind. We're not trying to impress anyone, at least not the weight anyway. So just make sure that there's control with everything you're doing. My only goal here, like I said, is just making sure that shoulder's still and the elbow's locked in place. And I felt this really, really well. Awesome way to finish your bicep workout with something in length range like this. Um, so I hope you enjoy this workout, guys. Like, there's some really cool concepts in there. I love the activation stuff. And I hope that uh, you can incorporate that into your own workouts.